a lot of the abuse took place inside the church, inside the house of God. Saying no to him would almost be saying like no to God. And when have you ever said no to God? I was sexually abused by a Catholic priest from the age of 11 to the age of 16. When I was between the ages of 15 and 17 years old, I was sexually abused by a teacher at a private Catholic high school in Southern California. With me, it started with long conversations about my mom and how I was alone. Then he started telling me secrets, and he wanted me to share those secrets with nobody else. Then it moved into the kissing and the touching. And within a few months, I was being, it was full-blown sexual abuse. And it was so bad. By the time that the abuse ended, I was 17 and I was pregnant and I had a sexually transmitted disease. I remember one time I was in class. Uh, I must have been in the sixth grade or something like that. One of the nuns came into the classroom and said, uh, Father Fidencio wants to see you. I get to the sacristy, I go upstairs, and so he tells me that he's drawing a picture of a rising Christ for Easter. He asked me if I want to model for him. And at that point he says, well, you got to take off all your clothes, and so he makes me take off my underwear. And then he has me lay down on the ground, and he starts putting me out in different poses. You know, you're a crucified Jesus. So I put my arms out, I put my head to one side, put my head to the other side. He starts manipulating my legs, my arms, my torso. He reaches down, starts playing with my penis. So then he tells me, well, now you need to start beating off. You got to masturbate. I end up ejaculating. He takes pictures of me. And then at that point, he just gives me my clothes, get dressed and go back to school. In 2001, and this is before the Boston Globe covered the crisis in Boston, which is chronicled in the Spotlight film, we had a scandal here in California. And a boy who had been sexually abused by my high school principal came forward and filed a lawsuit. He ended up getting documents that showed that the diocese knew that my high school principal had been abusing boys for years. And they'd even sent him to a church-run treatment facility where they send priests who sexually molest kids. As they go through the seminary students, they're very controlled. Everything's documented. In fact, uh, the priest who abused me has documentation that goes all the way back to the seminary that he was out there exhibiting unusual behavior by drawing uh, you know, men's penises and all kinds of other things and walking around naked. I contacted the diocese where I lived and I said, hey, this happened to me and I want to be a part of the solution. And they told me, well, why don't you sit on our lay review board where you can review cases where, you know, adults have come forward and said they were sexually abused as children by priests and employees and volunteers. And I sat on that committee for about six months and we didn't review a single case. And I began to realize that I was being played again, like I had been played in high school. They were buying my silence by putting me on this board. In the end, my lawsuit settled and I got more than 200 pages of documents, secret documents, spotlight documents in my case. And they included the signed confession from the man who sexually abused me. He confessed to abusing me, and he confessed to abusing my friends. I got secret documents from school administrators who said, oh yeah, we knew that this was going on. We knew that Joelle was being sexually abused, and we decided to keep it quiet because it was better that way. The Catholic Church is very good at keeping records. In fact, they have a rule book. It's called the Code of Canon Law. Those are the rules and regulations that bishops and priests and employees and Catholics have to follow. And a lot of those rules have to do with documenting sin and documenting child sexual abuse. For victims, it's been a lifesaver because it's been the proof that we have needed all along to say, hey, this really happened. I'm still a Catholic. I was born a Catholic. I'll die a Catholic. I certainly believe that in order to take care of this Catholic problem, it has to be done by a Catholic. The moment that I step outside the church, I'm considered an outsider and I no longer have a voice. Faith is a one-on-one -on -one relationship you have with a supreme being. And I don't need 
a guy in a Roman collar to tell me what my relationship with God has to be. 